Hi guys, I'm Smitha and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things AI and machine learning related. Today is day four of the 100 days of ML challenge. If you guys don't know what the 100 days of ML challenge is, do check out day zero of 100 days of ML. I'll be leaving the link to that video in the description box below. That video is going to be very useful in explaining to you guys what exactly this challenge is about and the different stages involved in this challenge. And also, once you've done that, be sure to actually join in the Discord channel, which I've created. It is so helpful. The community there is growing. And if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions as well, be sure to leave that in the Discord channel. And also guys, in addition to watching my videos, be sure to check out the homework, which I'm going to be listing in the description box as well. There's a bunch of useful links in the description box. So always be sure to check that out. So the links will usually be to uh, sections of the video tutorials in different courses that I recommend and also reading material of different articles, which are going to be extremely helpful as supplementary material to these videos. In today's video, we are going to be talking about loss, more specifically the most basic form of loss in machine learning and linear regression. So let's get started. Loss is a very important concept in machine learning. In fact, we're going to be talking about a loss throughout this entire machine learning challenge. Loss is a way in which you can understand if your machine learning model is doing good or not depending on the loss that is being calculated. Loss is also a way of measuring between two different machine learning models. If you're able to understand if one machine learning model has a much lesser loss, that is clearly a better machine learning model for your data. Loss is also in which you can measure the difference between the predicted and actual values. Loss has a lot, a lot of uh, functions within machine learning. It is also used by the machine learning model itself in order to optimize, in order to pick different variables, in order to minimize loss. So there's a ton of different ways that we can go about minimizing loss. But before we get into all of that, let's actually talk about more specifically, how do you calculate loss? Loss is the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So for that, we have to look at the y axis. So the y axis, we we are able to measure what is the actual value and what is actually the predicted value. So the actual value is this circle right here. These are all your actual data points, right? And with linear regression, you have come up with this model, which has predicted that this is the best fit line for these data points. So these are actually all your predicted values on this line. These are all your predicted values. And these data points are your actual data points. So what is the loss here? How do you calculate the loss here? So the loss is essentially the distance between the data point and your line. It's essentially the shortest distance between your data point and your line. So in order to calculate loss, you would have to minus your the value the y value of your data point minus the y value of this point right here on the line the most common uh, function for calculating loss is actually squared loss because oftentimes what happens is if you just take simply the the actual data point minus the predicted value you might end up with a negative value for example, right here, if your data point is below the line in this situation, the loss is actually negative. So that's not a good indicator. So that's why the most basic uh, function for calculating loss is, is called squared loss. Because when you square it, any value that you square is positive. So guys, let's go ahead and actually look at the squared loss function and how do we go about calculating it? So as I said before, squared loss is the square of the actual value minus predicted value. So actual value is represented by Y and predicted value is represented by Y hat. It's a, this is a very important concept to remember because as we go along and also this language, this mathematical language is also very important for you to remember because oftentimes you, if you're reading papers or you're looking at articles or any sort of thing to do with machine learning, 
it's easy to remember that y hat refers to the predicted value and y refers to the actual value, etc. So when we are looking at this particular formula, y minus y hat squared, this refers to the squared loss at one particular point. So we're looking at the squared loss at only one data point. What if we want the squared loss for all of the points? So that's when we would be looking at mean squared loss. So mean squared loss is the average of the sum of the squared loss at all the points. So that's definitely a handful to remember. So mean squared loss is essentially you taking the sum of all of the squared losses at each particular point. You calculate the squared loss at each point, each data point, and you add that all together and you divide that by the number of data points, which is n. So n actually refers to the number of data points. So similarly, you saw y minus y hat square, but here you're actually adding that, adding the that particular loss of each at each particular point at each particular data point so that's why we have the sum notation and also you divide the entire value by n because you want to get the average value you want to get the mean value next up we're going to have a short quiz to test your understanding of loss and also this is a short mathematical quiz as well because there is a definitely a mathematical trick in this quiz be sure to leave your answers down in the comment section below so mean squared error consider the following two plots you have your left plot and you see the you see the data points there's quite a few of cute there's quite a few data points which are actually perfectly on your predicted line and meanwhile on the right side we see there's even more data points exactly on your predicted line so which of these two data sets do you think has the highest loss? Do you think it's the left one or do you think it's the right one? This is quite a tricky, this is quite a tricky question. So be sure to actually think about how the loss function actually is. Be sure to think about the squared aspect of the loss function as well. So guys, leave your answers in the comment section below. Do you think that the left plot has a higher error value or do you think the right plot has the higher value the right plot has more data points on the actual predicted line versus the left plot so leave your answers in the comment section below so let's actually go ahead and look at the answers for this question which of the two data sets shown in the preceding plots have the highest mean squared error the data set on the right or the data set on the left I'm sure that some people might easily just pick the data set on the right because you just assume, hey, there's more data points on the line. So there's only two points which are outside of the line. Meanwhile, on the left side, there are actually four plots which are outside of the line. But in fact, the, the plot with the lowest mean squared error is actually the one on the left. The reason is this. Although the left plot has more points which are outside of the line, the right plot, the two points which are outside of the line, they are much further away. In fact, they are twice as far as the, the points which lie on the left side. Whenever we're calculating mean square error, we always use square. So since we're actually squaring the value, the difference, since this loss is already larger once we square it that value is only going to increase much more so that's why whenever we are doing linear regression and we are using mean square error as a way of calculating our loss you have to understand that if points are lying very far away from your predicted value or from the line that your model actually plots as the best fit line your mean square error is going to be much higher when you have these outliers uh, we'll talk about more, more what We'll talk more about what outliers are in the future. So outliers actually refer to just points which are really lying outside of the range of values that you'd expect. So guys, now that you have a very good understanding of one of the most basic loss functions in machine learning, mean squared error or mean squared loss, 
let's actually go back and look at our previous linear regression example that we have been talking about. Previous linear example of employee salary based on their years of experience. So now we can fully understand how the linear regression model is actually able to find the best fit line. So guys, if you recall, the equation for this particular linear regression model is, is y equals to mx plus c because we are only looking at one variable. We are only looking at, this is not a multivariate linear regression. Since we are only looking at the years of experience, it's simply y equals to mx plus c. And when we are thinking about linear regression, we want to understand how the machine learning model actually determines these values m and c. So now that we have understood the point of loss, we can actually try to, we can actually definitely understand how the linear regression model determines this value M and C. So what the linear regression model actually does at the very beginning is that it guesses a very random value for M and C. And then what it does is it calculates the loss. So for its initial guess, let's say the loss will be very high. Oftentimes the loss will be very high. And then it decides, okay, I need to find a better guess. It does a better guess and it might come, it, the, loss, the loss that it might calculate might be much lesser. And it does that again and again. It guesses, it guesses another value of M and C, which is in the, in the same direction. If the loss has decreased, it tells it that, okay, it's doing something right. It's doing something right and we should try values more in the same range. We should try values of M and C more in the same range of the previous guess because your loss actually decreased. So it does that again and again until there comes a point where the loss that it's calculating is not decreasing that much. And it comes to a point where it reaches this point right here the minimum point of loss. And that's when it knows that it has calculated the optimum values of M and C. So this is how a machine learning model essentially does linear regression. There is a lot of iterations which are happening and it is calculating loss till there comes a point where it is able to achieve minimum loss. And that is the optimum values of M and C. So guys, we are going to end off today's session with a short quiz. Be sure to leave your answers in the comment section below. Which of these statements about loss is true? A. At optimal values of W and C, loss is always equal to zero. And B. At optimal values of W and C, loss is at its minimum point. The second question is, why do we square the error in mean squared error? A. To increase the value of error in order to get a better estimate of error at each point or B. To handle negative error values. This quiz is going to be a great way to test your understanding of whatever has been thought in this session. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video. Be sure to check out the links in the description box below because they are going to be extremely useful and also be sure to check out the discord channel as well as all of the homework links as well.